Hello and welcome to another modeling video. This is Alan from the McConnerman at YouTube with a, another model build. Today, building and reviewing KP models MiG-15 with a very unfortunate NATO call name. Tooled in 1979 in communist Czechoslovakia. Absolutely amazing that the hobby was shared and loved by both sides of the Iron Curtain. This amazing historical hobby relic contains water slide decals, very comprehensive instructions, fantastic hand drafted diagrams and clear assembly scheme in the Czech and English language numbers corresponding with the runners five injected molded styrene runners one clear cast quality has little to moderate flash no warpage appropriately placed injector pin marks Generally pretty decent to good detail and assembly fit. Compared to other late 70, early 80 brands from Japan, England and the US that I've experienced. This build will use the traditional scale model method to finish. One cut to remove the part from the runner due to little clearance space from the sprue. Trim and sanding of the nub, plastic cement to adhere and assemble and putty to fill seam lines. Many of the tools and products are modern and not used during the time. According to scale mate, but pretty faithful to the original subject considering they had access to it for reference. This is mostly a nostalgia trip for me as I'm not a big aircraft modeler but did a lot in my childhood as it was what was available and cheap. This is something I would have gone for as a kid as the MiG-15 was my favorite aircraft at the time and did do one in the exact same scheme in a larger scale. The experience and struggles seem to be pretty similar and this build is dedicated to good and old friend David who did modeling with me during my primary school years. A big fan of the brand and would love to share it with the rest of the internet. From a Gundam armor and figure modeler, aircraft does come with various challenges. The biggest annoyance to me is visual internals from a canopy that also needs to be masked. Frail landing gear, back heavy and detail close or across seam lines along the fuselage. Modern aircraft tooling most likely have overcome these challenges or made it less irritating, but uh, something I have no experience with so please enjoy me struggling with these regardless still a lot of fun to do something a little different due to these challenges i like to finish an aircraft kit over a few sessions or days mostly linear according to the instructions but i start with the munitions and anything that requires a seam line including the fuselage obviously doing the cockpit at the very start loading the internals up and gluing the fuselage together and fixing it attaching wings, landing gear, then armaments. As I was a little cheeky and had night shift at work, I did the majority of the build away from the workbench and attached the wings when it was removed from the box back in the studio. With thin plastic and raised details, this looks pretty good, but I did struggle with the positioning of some parts and orientation with the instructions leaning on internet reference material. The fuel tanks are really ballsed up. Had fun regardless. Weekend from school during the 90s all over again. On my friend's kitchen table with some old enamel paint. Buy, build and paint a kit in a single session. This crazy yellow green striped Korean war scheme has always stuck with me. Conveniently the decal sheet also contained Korean decals. Quizzing a friend on the spot was told that the internals of MiGs is a light blue and sprayed that in the wheel wells and cockpit. Painting the seats grey, the panel black with a few instruments. In silver, it's all permanently sealed with PVA glue and the canopy. Then liquid mask for the true painting session. Apologies and bear with me, I'm still learning this camera. The entire aircraft, all painted in one piece, was primed with automotive primer for adhesion to the surface. Then base coated underneath silver, or could have been a light blue grey. And the top, this crazy yellow orange color which happens to be similar a Gundam color as well 
lucky to have on hand. Heavily thinned down with low PSI and patient, each camouflage band carefully applied according to internet reference material. Then an early attempt for definition, highlighting soot exhaust from the rear jet engine. Typical hand painting also with the landing gear and munitions, all in lacquer hobby paint. With blue tack masking the wheel wells removed, we moved to the decal process. The KP markings seem to be screen printed on a fairly thick water slide sheet. Amazingly, the adhesion survived 45 years, though did lift fairly quickly with a minimal stick. Clear coat fixed that, and the rest of the markings was found in my decal bits box from other projects. Moving on to the sludge wash, I thinned down Tamir accent color with gum turpentine, brushing it across all the edges, panels, and raised lines alike. Mopping back excess with a tissue as to not dirty and pollute the surface. A few full days for curing and hardening to occur. Sprayed a lacquer matte clear finish to dull the entire surface. Sadly, removing the canopy mask early did fog it. And failing to add nose weights also made it not balance on its own landing gear. Luckily, this stand was included. Far from my greatest modeling achievement, I'm glad and pleased to have pulled it off without any significant failures or unable to finish the project. At a casual glance, it's a MiG-15 and a closer look, a Korean War variant. A closer look, I don't think I'll be winning any IPMS awards. The most popular subject matter at shows and content creating is generally aircraft and it's something I've always wanted to get a hold of and relive from time to time. This project turning up at a model expo swap and sell for five dollars was just too perfect. It's been more than 15 years from my last serious aircraft kit, a Mitsubishi Zero. Or was it the Hawker Fury? And have an Airfix MiG-15 and a couple of bombers still sitting in the stash. I don't think aircraft will be a regular feature to my repertoire and channel. But I do have an ancient vac form kit sitting somewhere on my spray booth which will torture me sometime in the more recent future. If you are interested in this kit, Modern Chechia did resurrect KP models around 2010-2013 and offered a Korean war boxing of this kit. I'm not sure if the tooling is original, cleaned up, updated or new. Also a whole catalogue of aftermarket parts and markings available. This concludes my build and another nostalgia run experience video. I hope the insight was suitable enough to reflect and celebrate this old historic treasure and to be archived and preserved for future generations to enjoy when no longer available. Thank you very much for watching and as always until next time stay tuned for further content check out the description section for references and social media links to other builds and contents. We'll catch you guys next time. See you later.